Hello, I'm Bob Sweeting. I'm the president of Power Brake Service. We're a special distributor for Bosch HydroBoost brake systems. This is a system that runs off the power steering pump. We're here today in Huntington Beach at Racing and Performance Motorsports with CJ. He's our newest distributor for our HydroBoost systems. To do an installation on an off-road truck for off-road magazine that has serious brake issues. First of all, it has a big camshaft, low vacuum situation. Now it has oversized tires. It's heavy and it's fast. And the stock vacuum power brake unit just won't cut it. And because of this guy, now the, now the truck's gonna stop. So uh, let's check this out, huh? All right, let's go inside. So Jared, you're uh, editor with the Off-Road Magazine. That's correct. And you're building this truck as, as a typical example of off-road trucks. And you're having some issues. And some brake issues have arisen. It's got a larger cam. It's not making enough vacuum. And also, when we get in some rocks on steeper trails, there's really a problem where it's not quite stopping when the truck's on real severe angles. It just doesn't have the power and the pressure to uh, lock the caliper on the road. We're going to show the improvement from the vacuum booster to the hydro boost and how it's going to help these two issues, the tires and the camshaft. Sorry, I kind of, I'm not going to wear it, that's, that's tomorrow's job, <laughs> but hopefully they're out of the way. Man, can, uh, first step, of course, in installing a hydro boost is to remove the vacuum booster. It would be a good idea to remove the battery cable since we have these big cables in the way so we don't short things out. So we're going to remove the battery cable, get that out of the way. Next we're going to remove the master cylinder because with the tight clearance with the bar here, we're going to have to get this out of the way. A lot of off-road guys remove the uh, anti-lock brake system, which has the built-in uh, proportioning valve. On this vehicle, since the uh, ABS has been removed, they added in an adjustable proportioning valve, which we may or may not even need, but uh, it's here now. The problem with it is it's, it does this going down the highway, which fatigues the brake line, so they should, really should be clamped up. everything you can think of there. Yeah. One of the reasons we cannot reuse the original master cylinder is this is a two-stage master cylinder. It has a large bore to shove a lot of fluid out to move the caliper pistons out. Then that goes into bypass and then the regular pistons take over. But it's too large to fit inside the hydro boost so we have to replace the master cylinder. Do you? Do you really? Wow. On motor homes and heavy trucks? You want full pressure over your line. You bet. Okay. See, this picture drag racing. When you drop the clutch, all the horsepower goes through the leaf springs or the, or the arms, right? Mm -hmm. All the power pushes the frame forward. When you apply the brakes, you want the rears to pull the frame back. If we put 80% pressure into the fronts, vehicle wants to tow out. That's why you have tow in on alignment to allow for the rubber flex. Because as soon as the vehicle goes into tow out, it wants to dart. So I always like to put as much rear brake on the vehicle as I can. Got it. Which also takes the heat off the front brakes. You notice most cars, the front wheels are black with brake dust because mm -hmm. they're putting all the pressure in the front. You see, you know, we did that mostly with trucks and motorhomes. Mm -hmm. Because if they have dual tires on the back, that's where the weight is. Sure, sure, sure. So that's where you want the brakes. So what's your question? Question so Back to the question. In a proportioning valve, um, I guess I'm under the assumption that a proportioning valve doesn't really change the line pressure from one side of the proportioning valve to the other. It just slows down the, I guess, slows down the immediate line pressure. Like uh, when you stab the brakes, it won't let the same volume of fluid through as quickly but it still will eventually build up the same pressure on both sides of the portion valve, I would assume. No. How, how, does, it, how does it regulate and keep pressure on one side? You know, we've actually run pressure tests on stock proportioning valves, 
Because the pressure coming out of both ports of the, of the master cylinder is always equal. Okay. Whatever the master does, that's equal. So then you have to go down leg to proportion it. So normally drum brakes lock up. Disc brakes are not supposed to lock up. That's the issue. So we get the rears to the point where they're going to lock, you're only at half pressure to the fronts. So that's why they hold the pressure down on the rears to allow the front pressure to come up. Because six, uh, most drum brakes lock at 600 psi. Okay. Disc brakes are only halfway on at 600, so they won't work. It's once the rears start sliding, the fronts aren't working. Got it. So they hold the rear pressure down to allow the front pressure to rise. But yeah, these will limit the pressure. We normally will run pressure tests on uh, stock proportioning valves. It's usually 50%. Reduction of the rear. Is it? For stock tires. For a showroom vehicle. They go through all the DOT proving grounds tests. Mm -hmm. The vehicle is designed exactly for the, way it's the showroom tires. Now, once you make a change, all the rules change. If you put a welding rig on the back of this truck, the rules have changed. Now, if you put a welding rig on the back of a car, it wasn't designed for it. With trucks, we have more flexibility. We put bigger wheel cylinders on it and modify proportioning balance to get more pressure in the rear. Removing the brake pedal rod clip. After we remove the brake pedal rod clip, then we have to remove the four mounting nuts from underneath the dash to remove the, the vacuum booster. Okay, we removed the last of the four mounting nuts. Now we're going to pull the vacuum booster out. Get a picture of this. Compare the diameter of the vacuum booster compared, uh, as compared to the HydroBoost system. Much smaller, but still double the power. All right, Johnny's removing the uh, high pressure power steering hose that comes from the pump into the steering box. We're going to replace that with the, uh, the stainless fluid hose. So the standard hydrobus fitting is a, is a hose bar? The return, return line. Return. So the standard hydro, uh, hose set comes with two manual fittings and the rubber return hoses. Okay. So for those who want a full matching hose set, we designed our own fitting to replace the hose barb. A lot of times people are reusing that. Bending it out a little bit. You know, bending it? I was like, I can't see how they can. Yeah, yeah. They can't. That's, Bend that's it why too. we spent a lot, a lot of time coming up with this. Oh, I bet. Because we were taking those hoses and cutting the ends off and redoing them. Really? Oh, no. For a while, when we first started doing that. So. And the rubber hoses, I would imagine they can't hold up the pressure like these stainless can. Well, it's the return. Oh, for the return on yeah. yeah. Teflon lined. 5,000 PSI. What size is that? Is it 3 8 or 5 16 or? Uh, 3 8 or This can also be mounted upside down. How do you can be mounted upside down? Okay. You see, it was originally a Bendix design. First came out in 74. But Bosch bought Bendix in 1995. 
<laughs> we were already a, a Bendix distributor for 20 years prior. We were already doing hydro boost installs years ago. You break calipers? No. As well? That no, Bosch problem. makes their own calipers. Okay. Um, but, you know, since Delphi went out, there's a little bit of TRW, there's a little bit of Kelsey, but not much. It's almost all Bosch. I think they yeah. looked me up a little bit because oh, I had the history. I had something about hydro boost in the past just because I've been scared. In off roading situations, we tend to put a lot of stress on the power strain pump anyway, um, with the, you know, Sometimes we'll put a hydraulic assist ram on it as well. And a lot of times we're breaking lines and so, so on and so forth, which will run the power steering pump dry. But uh, I think with everything that we've done, I don't think it should be an issue. Like, I think I think that power steering pump should be good to go, right? The hydro boost doesn't need high flow. Steering does. Because you're moving the big piston up and down in the steering box, mm -hmm. and the ram, that requires volume. Sure. This only moves the mass on our piston three sixteenths of an inch. Really? So you're just, I mean, the pressure... The pressure the, passes it. right through. And there's a, in the spool valve, it has a cutout all the way around it. So even if you're in the applied position, it still has full flow through the spool valve onto the steering, even if you're stopping and steering at the same time. Really? Okay. Yeah, there's Excellent. no issue. Excellent. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you. Right. Okay. If it's an odd I have another one of them. You, you have one? Yeah. You have one for yeah. How do you got? I've always wanted to drive one. We've got the hydro ready to install. Firewall cleaned. Ready to go through the firewall. Watch your wires. And we'll bolt it down from the back. Okay, on installation, we make sure that the pedal rod ends up on the correct side of the pedal, not on the wrong side lines up perfectly. Now we'll put the nuts on and tighten it down. Now we've got the power brake in to tighten down. We're going to put the pedal retainer clip on and we'll be done underneath the, the dash. First hose we're going to install comes from the pressure port of the power steering pump to the inlet side of the hydro boost. The inlet side is always on the accumulator side or the or the larger port. Okay, our second pressure line is the outlet from the hydro boost that continues down to feed the pressure into the steering box. So we're going to mark that and cut it and then we'll install it. second way, uh, besides the hacksaw, is to use the air cutoff wheel, which leaves you a nice, clean, uh, straight cut. We're going to separate the stainless from the Teflon so we can push the olive over, over the end of the uh, Teflon only.
the day, it was called Double Check, I guess. Like of an existing hydro system, can you can you build a strong like say on that Super Duty out there? Can I put a a bigger hydro boost system, something that puts more pressure to the brakes? We've modified them internally, but usually it's up in the pump pressure. Okay, up the pump pressure. All right. So you know, the factors on a hydro boost is the pedal ratio, mm -hmm. size of the master, and pump pressure. The brakes are much improved on that, but still, when you know when there's a certain load on that on that truck. I can feel it, even with the better calipers, with the eight piston calipers, I'm not getting that pressure. It's just pushing right through, still, you know, the same spots when there's a big trailer behind that thing. So the same as it did with the brakes before. Once you've got the olive pushed on, flush to the end of the tubing, it's best to put a, a round punch in there and make sure the Teflon is round and pressed against the olive before you, before you push in your uh, fitting. When you're tightening down the fitting against the olive, you want to take it down not all the way, but roughly a thick fingernail clearance between these two nuts. If you, t if you tighten this all the way down, you'll crush the olive and it'll leak. It's also best to blow the line clean, make sure you have all the cutting debris out of the hose, otherwise it'll get under the pump. Yeah, so it might be getting That's up there. That's I just know of it. It's a serious problem. We're going to cut the return line that's coming back from the steering box, put a hose tee in there, and connect the uh, hydro's return into the uh, power steering return. Okay, our final connection on the hoses is we're going to tighten down the banjos. All the other hoses are connected. Now we're going to install the master cylinder and the lines for it. And we can bleed the system. The issue isn't just the size of the reservoir. The issue is the shorter reservoir has a shorter stroke piston in it. Okay. For two wheel cylinders, which are usually under one inch. So that piston is a short stroke. So if you try to work a disc brake with it, it'll deadhead in the end of the cylinder and the pressure drops. Stroke on both pistons to cover anything. And this is the Corvette master cylinder? Yeah, it's a, it's a version of it. A version of it. Now we're installing the brake lines. We'll tighten up the lines. Actually, I'm going to tighten them and then loosen them up half a turn so it'll bleed itself. And just only really use the same size fittings, huh? Yeah. That's handy. <laughs> done some of these. Spring fluid is an oil. Mm -hmm. Whereas transmit uh, regular old style transmission fluid is designed to bite the clutches in the transmission. So it doesn't lubricate as much. But oh. the Dextron cuts the foam out of the heavy, thick power steering fluid. Because hmm. so straight you, power steering fluid has a tendency to foam in this system. So it's too dicky. thick. Yeah. So the Dextron settles down to foaming. No kidding. Huh. But specifically Dextron. Yes. No, not straight ATF. Okay. okay. 
Yeah, that'll, really that'll chew up the veins. A lot of people say just pour it in if you don't have power steering fluid. They'll say just pour in ATF in your... Well, I'll get you home, but... <laughs> <laughs> so half and half. On, on my Corvette, I mean, that pumps 250,000 miles. And I, what I would just take a turkey baster and suck all the fluid out of the top. Top it off as fresh every few months. And keeps it keeps it clean. Because I put Dexon in his in his new system, because mm -hmm. it kept foaming, mm -hmm. and AGR told him not to ever use transmission fluid. I said, "No, it's not. This is Dexon." They said not to put that in there. He he got mad at me. <laughs> He's still not talking to me. Wow! Did they put a splash of Dexon in his no. in his no, power steering? <laughs> so, pal, you know what? If it ruins your power steering box, I'll buy you a new one. Okay. And it eventually settled down to foaming. Because it, it kept growling and foaming. Yeah. You step on the brake and it would foam it again. Hydraulic, uh, hydraulic assist ram. The ram? Yeah, so it's running that. So now it's running Did you that. change the hoses? Yeah. From the so. pump to the booster? No. You see, there was a bunch of those that were twisting the end off the power steering pump. Rip. Well, this, when we did it, it's only it's the power steering box and then there's two ports out the side. And then they run to the thing, so you never even unscrew it, anything. To but the hose from the pump to the hydrobus, is it the original Ford one? Yeah, it has to be. Well, AGR uh, was buying some hydroboost from another guy who was drilling holes through the hydroboost, claiming that that would assist the Fords in steering easier because he was porting out the hydroboost ports. Uh huh. And I said, but it still didn't work. They were using his rebuilds instead of our new ones because this guy claimed to have the secret porting mm. for the Fords to allow him to steer better. Well, I said, we actually measured the outlet of the Ford hose less than a hundred thousandths, less than an eighth of an inch coming into the booster. And if you try to steer it too quick, do a deadhead to pump. The steering get hard. Huh. With with big tires, we're ready to pour fluid in the power steering pump and also fill the master cylinder so, so we can bleed it. We're gonna slowly fill the power steering pump. We left the line loose up here so it's actually gravity feeding to bleed the system out. It's actually letting the air out right here. By leaving the lines loose on the master cylinder, it will actually gravity bleed by itself. So now that it's already dripping, we know the cylinder is full. We'll just tighten up that line. It'll be blood. And we're going to turn the steering wheel back and forth. Burp the air bubbles out of the hydro boost and the new hoses. This may take 10 to 20 uh, revolutions, but it saves a lot of wear and tear on the pump. You know, spin the motor over it without starting it. Man, he was just like his character. You know, it's just, can I help you? And there's a cigar sitting out of this guy, and I'm like, oh my god, it's you! <laughs> it's like from the pictures I've seen for years. Couldn't believe it when I walked into his shop. Who is this? Dick Landy. Dick Landy, yes. He's Dandy Mr. Dick Handy. Landy. Yeah. Famous, famous dragger. Landy. What did he die about two years ago? Yeah, they had one of his cars out there at the B&M show. We got our master cylinder bled, our lines are tight. Power steering pump's full. Ready to do a final bleed on the power steering. And then we're gonna go test drive it. Do you sound like a really loud electric mm -hmm. vacuum pump? Like that? People hate that. Oh, and it still won't stop. This beats that vacuum pump. Off the flu 
fluid, get it stabilized, and then we're going to go test drive it. solid feeling pedal but yet it has more stopping pressure Before that, it stopped fine, but how, how do you think now? Oh, it stops excellent now. It's not, it stopped okay for a big truck before, but it's not excellent brakes. Now, these are actually good brakes. Impressive good brakes. Way more power assist than before with the vacuum. The hydro boost is making a huge difference. So we put a lot more pressure to the braking system. So I had good brake calipers and good brake rotors, but I wasn't able to get the pressure down like I am now. Glad we could help.
Faster into the 